Hey guys, this is Austin. So today I got an interesting question. What is the worst laptop ever? So of course there are lots of ways to be a bad laptop. So you could have a bad trackpad, screen, keyboard, price, battery life, lots and lots of things can make an otherwise good laptop not so good. But to be the worst laptop ever, well, that one got me thinking. Going over the last 25 years of laptops, there are a lot of them that stand out. So some of these are way too expensive, some of these are way too big and heavy, and some of these just flat out don't work. So let's go over the top five worst laptops ever. Starting off at number five, we have the Apple Macintosh Portable from 1989. Now it might seem weird to include the grandfather of the modern day MacBook in the worst laptops ever, but take one look at this one and I think you'll agree with me. The big issue here was that the Macintosh Portable, well, it was the Macintosh Portable, as this thing was over 16 pounds and well over four inches thick. Now of course inside it was actually fairly decent for the time. It had a 16 megahertz Motorola processor and one megabyte of RAM. However all that didn't help it from being absolutely massive as it was basically a normal Mac from the time kind of crammed into a portable form factor. Another major problem is that it's powered by a lead acid battery, the same kind of battery you'll find in your car. Now this didn't work too well for a laptop as if you ever actually depleted the battery to 0% it was totally dead. To make it even worse, if you tried to plug it in and use it just off the AC adapter, it wasn't powerful enough to actually run the then pretty powerful hardware. So couple all this with the giant $6,500 price tag, and the Mac Portable really wasn't so portable after all. At number four, we have the IBM ThinkPad TransNote from 2001. Now the big problem with this one was actually that it was way ahead of its time. So on one hand you had what was basically a normal laptop. So you had a Pentium 3 processor, Windows 98, and actually a fairly impressive 10.4 inch touchscreen. Where it ran into issues is the pen really wasn't all that comfortable to use as it was much larger than a normal sized pen. And on top of that, when you ran out of ink, you actually had to buy the ink cartridges straight from IBM. On top of that, the entire thing was absolutely massive. And with a $3,000 price tag, it didn't last too long. At number three, we have the Sony Vio P from 2009. Now this was back when netbooks were really big, so I imagine Sony engineers said, hey look, we can do way better than that. And by better, they meant way smaller. The screen itself wasn't bad. It was an 8 inch display with a resolution of 1600 by 768, which actually is better than some 7 inch and 8 inch tablets today. However, where it came into problems was the fact that the Intel Atom processor that was powering it was way too weak to actually handle that resolution. And on top of that, that resolution was really, really small. With Windows XP on an 8 inch display, it was very hard to see much of anything that you were doing. On top of that, it had a tiny little keyboard and absolutely no trackpad or touchscreen. So all the navigation you did was with a little tiny nub in the middle of the keyboard. Combine this with a $900 price and it didn't last too long, although funnily enough you can actually still find them brand new on Amazon. At number two we have the Zenith Mini Sport from 1989. Now this was actually a great idea and again something that was ahead of its time. Basically this was one of the very first ultra portables. Now of course taking a look at it today it really wasn't all that ultra portable, but compared to laptops of the time, especially like the Macintosh portable, it was actually a lot smaller. Where it ran into problems was the fact that it relies on 2 inch floppy disks. Now if you've never heard of these before there's a good reason, they absolutely flopped and it costing over $8 per floppy was way way too much money for people to spend. So because of this it was very difficult to get any kind of programs or in fact do a whole lot of anything on this laptop. The operating system was also saved on a RAM disk, which meant that if the battery ever went out you had to go into the BIOS and reset it up to be even able to boot the computer. Combine all of this with a $2800 price tag and it's no wonder that we don't hear about Zenith anymore. Coming in at number one are 2004 to 2006 Dell laptops. Now there are actually a lot of laptops, 4 million in fact, and the reason why they get number one is because they exploded. Back in 2006, a Japanese businessman's Dell laptop actually burst into flames in the middle of a conference room. The internet lit up with stories about Dell laptops lighting on fire, and because of this Dell was forced to recall over 4 million of their laptops. In the end, the Dell laptops which actually caught on fire and could actually hurt and or kill you, take the top prize in the worst laptop of all time. Anyway, that's about it. If you enjoyed, definitely be sure to check out my what to expect on the upcoming Samsung Galaxy S4, and if you enjoyed, be sure to leave this video a thumbs up and subscribe. Anyway guys, I will catch you next time.